But I want to start this week with Josh McDaniels. So Josh McDaniels was the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders, and he was fired, I would say, unceremoniously the other night. I say night because it was 1 o'clock in the morning, and Josh McDaniels is no longer the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. They also got rid of the offensive coordinator, and they got rid of their general manager. The Las Vegas Raiders and Mark Davis are obviously cleaning house. They obviously feel that a change is needed, and they made that change overnight. Let me ask you a question. What does it say about you if your boss fires you in the middle of the night and the press release comes out in the middle of the night that says we have parted ways with our head coach and general manager? I know I wouldn't feel too great about that because it doesn't say a whole lot of good things about you. I think it's fair to say that the Raiders have massively underachieved in this season. They're three and five now. We're about at the halfway point. So if you extrapolate that out, they're going to finish somewhere with six or seven wins. I just want to say, too, when Mike and I did reading the defense and we did our entire preview of the NFL, many people, when we talked about the AFC West, came at us talking about how the Raiders were going to surprise us and how full of crap we were because we weren't talking about the Raiders en enough. Let me ask you, how are you feeling about the Raiders now? Do you feel like this is an organization that has it together? Do you feel like this is a team that's all of a sudden going to make a playoff run? The answer to that is no, folks. The Raiders do not have it. Here's why I advocate for this particular firing. I love Josh McDaniels. I've loved him ever since he was a New England Patriot. And I feel like as an offensive coordinator, he is an above average, if not elite offensive coordinator. But this is the second time now that he has been given a head coaching gig. And what have we seen? He had 11 wins out of 20-something game. He was like 11-23 and 23 in Denver and 9-16 and 16 here in Las Vegas, or whatever the record is. The point is, the record sucks. Josh McDaniels as a head coach just doesn't have it. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with being a great coordinator. There's nothing wrong at being good at something that is not being the head guy. Josh McDaniels just, to me, is not head coach material. I don't know why. I'm not really sure why. The personnel moves were questionable at best outside of Devontae Adams. He was handed a playoff team. The Raiders went 10-7 and seven the year before. Now that year, they fired John Gruden. They had the Henry Ruggs situation, and they turned over from their interim head coach, who, by the way, brought them to the playoffs. Just want to point that out. So they bring in Josh McDaniels, who gets a second look as a head coach, and they also not only give him a playoff team, but they give him Devontae Adams, who's one of the best, if not the best receiver in the entire NFL. Devontae Adams. And Derek Carr at that point in time was not what he is now with the Saints. He still had some juice left in him. And in my opinion, with Josh Jacobs, they had an offense that should have been able to produce. And they didn't. They looked terrible last year. Appreciably worse than what he was handed. When you are handed a playoff team and it's not gutted as a rebuild, you are expected to make the playoffs. Josh McDaniels did not do that. Fast forward to this year. Questionable moves. They get rid of Derek Carr, who, honestly, in hindsight, is probably washed. They bring in Jimmy Garoppolo. Nothing against Jimmy Garoppolo, but at this point in time, you know exactly what you're going to get out of Jimmy G. And this is no Kyle Shanahan offense, by the way. The team at times has looked fine. They crushed my Patriots because the Patriots are not very good. So that doesn't really tell you anything about the Raiders. But in the biggest moments, more specifically or more recently, this game against the Lions in which Jimmy G missed throw after throw after throw, some of which was Devontae Adams with a step or just completely and blatantly wide open. And they couldn't get it done against the Lions, who are a great football team. This is an organization that is a mess. And the reason it is a mess is because it is run poorly from the top down. I've never owned a football team. I don't have to own a football team to see that this is incompetent management. We've all seen incompetent management. Hell, we might even at one point in our life been incompetent management. If you're introspective enough to be able to go back in your life and look at the mistakes that you've made, at some point in time, maybe we've all made this kind of mistake. We've run something poorly. Mark Davis does not run this organization the way that his dad did. He just doesn't. Al Davis was about just win, baby. And for the most part, he lived up to that mantra. Mark Davis does not do that. The personnel decisions that they make, the reason why they choose the people that they do to represent them on the football field is flawed. 
because they don't get great value when they draft. They don't make really good choices when it comes to personnel moves and trades. Again, the Devontae Adams trade was great, but why trade for him if you're not going to utilize him? He could be killing it somewhere else. Just about any other elite team in the league, he'd be killing it right now. Can you imagine if he was a chief? Patrick Mahomes would throw him the ball 18 to 19 times a game, and that would be the floor for how many times he would get it. And the Raiders are misusing him. They're a mess. Antonio Pierce is going to take over as head coach, and I totally wish him well. Even though he was on those Giants team that beat the Patriots, I don't hold any grudges. You always like to see somebody, for the most part, that gets that step up. You want to see them succeed. Antonio Pierce has a really tough road ahead of him. But it's kind of a win-win if you think about it. If you really think about it, Antonio Pierce has given this team, at 3-5, and five, are there any expectations? You're starting Aiden O'Connell, who is a rookie, so you're not expecting him to light things up. He wasn't a first-round draft pick. It's questionable as to whether he'll actually be anything in the league, but you have to figure out if you have something with him. So he's going to have a rookie quarterback, a team that's 3-5. and five. Devontae Adams is just not happy. They've already passed the trade deadline, so they can't get rid of him, but he probably doesn't want to be in Las Vegas long-term. So there's really not any expectations of Antonio Pierce. He's going to get to coach this team. They're probably not going to be any good. But if he does turn them around and they do make the playoffs, he'll probably be in line for a head coaching gig, maybe even with the Raiders. I don't think it's going to happen because I think the last time this happened, they didn't sign the interim coach who brought them to the playoffs under all that circumstance. But I think at this point, though, is the Raiders are going to look for the high splash guy. And Jim Harbaugh may be available. And we're going to talk about the Jim Harbaugh stuff on Friday on College Kickoff Eve. But there's a lot of names that are going to circulate with this job. Now, my question to you, if you're watching or listening at home, if you want to call in, 703-718-6314 is the number to call or text. Is the Raiders job a coveted job? Is it something that some of these young coaches would want? Now, there's only 32 jobs in the entire league. I get that. But is it the kind of job that attracts some of the best candidates? Or is it going to be just because it's open? There's probably going to be a few NFL vacancies this offseason, but the Raiders are already a vacancy. They're not going to fill it midseason. We will find out in the offseason. But I will say that right now, the way that this organization is run, this, to me, is not an attractive job. It's a dumpster fire. And they're probably going to gut this thing and start all over again. And think about that. John Gruden was given... 10 years, $100 million, knowing that they were going to be moving to Vegas. He was given a grace period. Everything that happened with the commander's stuff and all the investigation, fine. He wasn't fired for football. But I think they were headed in that direction because John Gruden himself was not doing a great job of adapting to today's game. So they bring in a guy who has already been a head coach, assuming, okay, he didn't do that great the first time. He had a second stint with the Patriots, won some Super Bowls. He made Mac Jones look exceptional in his rookie year, really, if you think about it by rookie standards. Let's go get this guy. He just didn't work out. He's not head coach material. He's offensive coordinator material. I guarantee that he'll be an offensive coordinator somewhere. Probably not in New England, but somewhere. He'd make a great offensive coordinator. Imagine what he could do with Justin Fields. Imagine what he could do with C.J. Stroud or guys like that, guys coming out of this draft. There's a lot of talent that could be coming out here. Imagine if he's handed Caleb Williams, of all people. Could do a lot of great things. He's just not a great head coach in this league. The Raiders, to me, are a poorly run organization, and I think you're seeing it. You're seeing it manifest on the field. You're seeing it manifest in the manager's offices. It's just a poorly run organization, and having just moved to a new city, you've got to get it together because you cannot afford to be bad and be mismanaged this whole time. So Josh McDaniels, you deserve to get fired, unfortunately. I don't want or wish this on you, but the results are there. The proof is in the pudding. The Raiders need a complete overhaul, and we're going to find out at the end of this offseason how they actually fare. And going into next season, there'll be hope again, because hope always springs eternal.